Today I want to show you something that we've been getting a lot of phone calls about, and that is how do I work with Modbus devices? Specifically, how do I make them work with the rest of my monitoring system, where I might use an SNMP manager and it's not compatible? This is an article from our website that I think is helpful. I'll go ahead and make this diagram a little larger. It all starts with the Modbus device in question. The most common thing we see are generators, but it really could be any device that uses Modbus. It needs to be, have its data intercepted by some kind of an interpreter, a mediator. So this RTU can understand Modbus, understand that alarm information, and then send it up via SNMP traps to our SNMP manager. And once we've done that, everything from that generator is visible in the same interface as all of our other alarms. And that's really the goal. We want everything to be one unified system. So let's take a look at how to set that up. As an example of an RTU, I have a NetGuardian 16A web interface. So we'll open that up. This is what it looks like right after you log in, and we'll start in the green provisioning section. You can see I have some menu sections for Modbus, and I'll go to Modbus Devices. The poll delay and the poll timeout, those defaults are fine unless you know you need to change them, so we'll leave those alone. And for the device type, I have Generac H100 and Generic. Because I'm not setting up that particular Generac generator here, I will choose Generic. The IP address, where can I find this device on the network? I'll punch that in. TCP port 502 is usually correct, but change it if you need to. And the Modbus address is a number between 1 and 247. That is just the device's unique identifier in this string of Modbus devices. Because I only have one device in this particular string, it'll be address 1, and that'll be the correct value. So I will click Save now. We do need to write to the unit after we save a page worth of changes. It'll take about two seconds, and then the write is complete. Now that we've created that device, we need to go back into provisioning, and now we'll go past devices and go on to registers. So you can see we have capacity for up to 64 here, and in the very first one, I will choose the new device, device one, generic, that I created. I will give this particular register a description. And one of the most common things to do with the generator is you'll want to monitor your fuel level but I want to be as specific as possible for all my operators who are going to be looking at these alarms, so I will actually call it propane level, just to be a little more specific as to what this generator uses. Once I have that label, I'll go to details. Register number, you'll need to consult your manufacturer's documentation, but in this case I'll say it's 4025. 16 bits is very common for an analog value, but if you need to change that, go ahead. The units, as I say, it's been percent here. You theoretically could use gallons or liters, whatever you want, but percentage will be good here now. And then my thresholds. These defaults are intended for monitoring a string voltage, some kind of a power at neg 48. You can see they're surrounding a negative 48 value. Doesn't make any sense here for a fuel tank. So I'll go ahead and change everything. My major under, what's my red alert? When do I need to send a fuel truck right now? We'll call that 10%. My minor under, what's my early warning yellow alert? We'll call that 25, say. And my over values, those make sense if I'm monitoring temperature or humidity or something, but here they don't make a lot of sense, so I'm going to push them outside of the range. So at 105 and 110, we should never really bump into those. And the dead band is used just to prevent flickering alarms, so a value needs to change by at least 1% in order to trigger anything at all. With all of that input, I will click Save. After the reboot, there's just one more thing we need to do, and that's to make sure that the NetGuardian will be sending SNMP traps in the way that we expect to our SNMP manager based on whatever it's learned from the Modbus registers. So we do that in derived alarms, and before we get going here, we do need to get a little bit of background on how all of the alarm space is structured, and we do that here in the display map. The display map lists everything this NetGuardian monitors, all of the discrete alarms, system alarms, analogs, digital sensor inputs, and even the Modbus registers. So you can see from what we have here that Modbus register 1 is our propane level. We just set that up. And the four thresholds that we set up, you recall we had the 10% and the 25% for our unders, those are already brought out. Those already have SNMP traps that are going to be associated with those conditions. So those are taken care of. But there's a lot more flexibility to the system than that. Let's assume that you don't have a standard 16-bit analog reading in your register. Maybe the 16 bits are used to represent 16 different discrete alarms. Well, there's no built-in handling of that, but you can set that up very easily. And what you just need to note is that on this line here, 
On display 28, points 9 to 32, those are the actual register values. So we can actually access those bits individually or hook them together with logic using the derived alarms area. So let's put this to the side. And let's say we consulted our manufacturer documentation and that first bit represents generator fail. So we'll type in a description here for generator fail. And then under the details, we have to tell it what it's going to grab to derive this virtual alarm that we're creating. And so to do that, we always start with either an or or an and syntax, and we'll start with or here. And it's simply display 28.9, because remember from the map, 0.9 is where we start the range here. And we can click parse to confirm we got our syntax correct, and it looks like that was successful. So at this point, once I save this, that first bit of the Modbus register will be echoed out as this particular alarm that we've called generator fail. And we can do that so on down the line. If you wanted to create a range, say the first three alarms are the ones that matter, that's going to be 9, 10, and 11. Well, we can just do a hyphen 11 there. And you can do all kinds of different equations here to control how you want to take Modbus registers and translate them into SNMP. So as you can see, the system is very flexible, and it gives you a lot of control over how you want to turn Modbus into SNMP and get it into your SNMP manager. For more information about Modbus mediation, call DPS at 1-800-693-0351.